The opening hole is an absolute stunner. At 414 yards and the beautiful Rocky Mountains in the backdrop, you know you're in a special treat. We start this round off by absolutely pummeling a drive right down the center of the fairway. I have just over 90 yards left and don't hit the most committed shot here. Leave this out a little bit to the right and I hit the front of the green so we're going to have a long outside chance at a birdie. From this distance, you're really just trying to get a two putt, and you can see that these greens are rolling pretty good, breaks quite a bit. Not the best effort, but again, it is a tap in par to open our round here at Banff Springs. I had a good buddy of mine from Calgary join me today. This is Scott. Let's take a look at him as we approach the second hole here. Scott's a lefty, as you can see, and he hits this beautiful draw that's very consistent. He's a very good player, and you're gonna see him throughout today's vlog. The second hole here is absolutely stunning. Look at this mountain backdrop. This is really just a, such an amazing view for a par three. Just 171 yards from the tips. This is a little eight iron for me. You do hit the ball a lot further in Alberta and I'm still trying to get my distances sorted out. I didn't actually hit that one as clean as the tracer looked and I found myself just in front of the green. Now, Alberta is called the Texas of Canada and I've chosen to use the Texas wedge. I'm using a putter from just off the green and this is straight uphill, so I'm going to have to give this a little bit of gas. And I actually hit a really good putt here. This rolls out to just about three and a half feet. And actually, Scott was very generous. He rolled that back to me and gave that to me for par. The first par five at Banff Springs comes at the third hole. And again, that beautiful mountain backdrop. This is a dog leg to the right. And you're going to ideally move this ball left to right off the tee. I had an absolutely perfect drive here. I'm starting some with some really good rhythm and feeling very confident in today's round. On my approach shot, I couldn't actually see the hole here, so I had to, again, move this from left to right, ideally, and I didn't really commit to this shot and actually just hit a six iron here, pulled it well left of my target, but it's left me in a decent position to kind of get up and down for my birdie. I'm greenside in two shots and have just a pretty standard pitch right over this bunker. This is not a hard shot. Just need to commit, just land this over the bunker and let this roll out towards the hole. Hit a pretty good pitch here. We've got about 10 feet up the hill for my birdie attempt. Hit a good putt here, but I just didn't read this enough. And unfortunately that falls on the low side, but it is a tap in par and off to the devil's cauldron. The fourth hole is the signature hole at Bam Springs and it's easy to see why. You'd be hard pressed to find a more beautiful backdrop for a golf hole than here on the fourth hole, which is nicknamed the devil's cauldron. 192 yards. This is a very intimidating tee shot here. And I'm actually hitting a seven iron here. I pull it just a little bit left of my target, but I'm hoping for it to kind of kick right and funnel back down onto the green. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that shot. I was a little unlucky for that ball to stay up. Usually the balls do funnel back down towards the hole, but nonetheless, I've got an easy putt here and I've just been able to lag that down. And that is a tap in par on this signature par three. Our pace of play was a little bit slow and I had to play catch up. I didn't film anything on the fifth hole. I did make a bogey. So actually I come to the six tee at one over par. Another beautiful vista here from the tee box on the six hole. This par four stretches just 373 yards. As you can see, it's a very wide open fairway. I've decided to take driver and just give this a full rip towards the green. It's a little bit right of my target, but that's not gonna hurt me. I'm gonna have a simple flip wedge in. I love playing golf in Alberta. It's such beautiful conditions here, but you do hit the ball a lot further than when you're at sea level. So I'm really trying to adjust here. I actually thought I hit a pretty good shot here, but just didn't catch all of that. And I've left myself in the front portion of the green. I'm gonna have to scramble for my par. When you're playing Banff Springs, make sure to look backwards after you finish playing the hole. Look at this view behind the green on the six. It's absolutely stunning. Now I'm just in front of the green here and I'm really happy with my short game in today's round. You're gonna see throughout this round that I've been really grinding hard on my short game. And to be honest, it's pretty razor sharp. And I managed to just hit this to within a couple of inches and I managed to save my par on the six hole. The second par five is the seventh hole, stretching 602 yards from the championship tees. This is a very good tee shot here. And I actually hit this a little bit further left than I intended, but it's okay. It's not gonna hurt me at all. You can see my stance is a little bit awkward here. The ball is well below my feet here. I've decided to hit a three wood and I'm just gonna basically chase this up and let this hit a very low running shot. Thankfully, I avoid that bunker there and I let this run out. I'm gonna have just a little wedge in for my third. Got just over 95 yards here for my third shot into this par five. And ideally, I really wanna be aggressive here, 
but I have a hard time really gauging the right distance out of the rough. And again, I had a very similar shot, short and right, and that's not ideal on this par five. We're just off the green here on the seventh hole. And again, we're gonna use that Texas wedge. Hit a pretty good effort here. Managed to lag this up to within a couple feet of the hole. And that's an easy tap in five to remain at one over par. I've been playing golf for over 20 years and I still am searching for that elusive hole in one. I told my buddy Scott, today is gonna be the day. I really feel that one of us are gonna get a hole in one playing this famous golf course. And this was my best swing of the day. It's 150 yards, I've got a pitching wedge, and I took dead aim at that pin. My ball mark was just past the green, had a little bit of backspin, and that was a pretty good effort at getting the ace. Hit that to about 18 inches, and those are the type of birdie putts that you love. Still chasing that ace, but that was a very good attempt. <laughs> All right, well, we've hit the shot of the day here at the eighth hole, 150 yard, par three, and we've hit this to about 18 inches or so. Chasing that ace here on Canada Day. Beautiful par three. What a treat here. We're on the final hole of the front nine. This is the ninth at just 501 yards. This is a very reachable par five, and you definitely want a solid tee shot here. Very similar to the third hole. The first par five we played is a dog leg to the right, and that tee shot puts me in position A to attack. I absolutely peppered that drive and have just under 180 yards left for my second shot. This is just a nice, smooth seven iron for me right at the center of the green. I've got about 25 feet left for my eagle here, but I have to be honest, I'm a little bit intimidated by the amount of break that I have to play here, and I don't hit my best putt here. Never had it on the right line, but nonetheless, it, I've lagged it to within just about 18 inches of the hole. That's an easy tap-in putt for my birdie, and we've gone back-to-back -back birdies to close out the front nine. The back nine opens with a 218 yard par three, and I believe that the 10th hole at Bam Springs by far is the best par three on the property. This is a golf hole. I'm hitting a five iron here, and I don't catch this clean, and I've left myself just in front of the green. I'm gonna have to scramble for my par. Feeling very confident here. This is actually a very easy position. I should be able to hit this one pretty close, but I'm very surprised that this did not release more. And now I've got a testy little 10 footer left for my par. Make a great stroke here. Just a little bit of a misread that dies out just on the left side of the hole. It's a little bit of a momentum killer after two straight birdies, but it's a bogey and we're back to even par. The 11th hole is 417 yards here. I've decided to hit a driver here and sometimes you need a lucky break in a good round. My lucky break comes right here because this tee shot is a massive hook to the left and this most definitely is in the center of the trees and gonna be very difficult to find. But like I mentioned, every good round, you do need some lucky breaks and I got mine here. Mine definitely hit this tree and bounced back into the rough here. I've got just about 150 yards left and I'm hitting a nice smooth nine iron from this rough and we put ourselves on the dance floor exactly like we need to. Got an outside chance at a birdie here. Feeling pretty confident on the speed of these greens. Another good lag putt to just about three feet. We tap that in for our four and off to the next. The Bam Spring Golf Club runs parallel to the Bow River and this hole, the 12th hole, is nicknamed the Big Bow in tribute to this river. This is a very difficult hole at 442 yards. You're gonna have to step up and hit a great drive. And I managed to regroup myself after that big hook and I pummel this right down the center of the fairway. Managed to catch my buddy Scott here as well. Take a look at his swing. He also hits a great drive right in position A, straight down the middle. I have just over 130 yards left to the pin, but that pin is tucked all the way back in the very corner. I decided to stay aggressive here and I'm really going for that. And unfortunately, I cannot judge the distance from that rough and I overshoot the green and now I'm gonna have to hustle for my par. So one of the things that's incredible about the Stanley Thompson design course is you always have to look behind the hole and look backwards to the tee. One of the things that Stanley Thompson wanted the golfers to see is experience the hole first, then look back and enjoy that beautiful backdrop. We have the incredible Bow River. It's quite elevated here. It's much higher than normal. Fast moving current. It's behind the 11th green here. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the view from behind the green here and I'm feeling quite confident. Managed to get my lob shot here and I hit it, let this ball roll out. And again, that's another easy tap in. The short game is really feeling confident right now. I'm very happy to save that par. The 13th hole is 225 yards from the championship tees and I'm hitting a five iron here. 
He had a pretty good strike right here. I was playing for the draw, but it blocked that a little bit right. And once again, we're going to have to get up and down for our par. One of the things I've been really working on with my chipping is just 100% focusing on my landing area. You can see in my pre-shot routine, I'm just trying to feel my club sliding through that grass, and I'm really just looking at constantly at where I want to land this ball. I try to envision that ball rolling out, and again, I've had managed to hit a great shot right here. Lagged it up to just a couple of feet, and that's an easy tap in par. And here we are in the beautiful 14th hole. 444 yards from the tips, but probably one of the most iconic backdrops in all of Canadian golf. This is the, fair, the famous Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. Arguably one of the most famous hotels in the world, certainly the most famous in Canada. Beautiful backdrop here. This is just an absolute treat to play. Look at this backdrop. That's gonna be a lot of fun playing the approach shot into here on the 14th. The iconic view of the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. This is one of the most famous hotels in all of Canada and a beautiful backdrop for this tee shot. And I managed to hit one of my best swings of the day, blast it right over those fairway bunkers and we are in position A on this oh, beautiful so hole. Good. Just over 120 yards left from my approach. I'm a little bit in between clubs. I decided to hit a sand wedge because the ball is flying quite far. <laughs> I don't actually catch all of that though. And again, I've left myself short right and another long birdie putt. Again, from this distance, you really aren't expecting to make these. If you can just walk off with a two putt, you're more than happy. One of the most breathtaking backdrops for any tee shot in Canada, the 15th hole is a stunner. The, poor, the hole plays 475 yards, and I managed to hit another really good drive here. I pull this a little bit left, but we're gonna have just a short wedge in. I have 130 yards left here. I've decided to go with a gap wedge because I've got a little bit of a flyer lie here. Just manage a really solid swing here. Very happy with this result, and that's gonna leave us about 20 feet up the hill for a birdie. I'm making a lot of pars today, but you can see I'm just not as sharp with the irons. I haven't really hit a lot of approach shots very close. And again, from these distances, I'm really just trying to two putt. So I'm staying very consistent, hitting a lot of greens, hitting a lot of fairways. Another beautiful tee shot here on the 16th hole. We had a great drive, signature draw, right around those bunkers, and we are in a good position to attack. I have just over 100 yards left for my approach here on 16, and I actually thought I hit a really good shot here, but it's been very difficult for me to judge that ball coming out of the rough. My club face actually slides a little bit under that. I don't come near close to catching all of that, and now I'm short of the green, and again, I have to, have to scramble once again for my par. But if there's one lesson that I've taught you in today's vlog, it's, it is the importance of a good short game. And again, this is really what makes the PGA Tour professionals on TV, this is what makes them the best players in the world is having a razor sharp short game now today's short game honestly was really exceptional for me this was really one of my best short game performances i've just consistently getting up and down and having a great feel with the chipping managed to hit that to a couple of feet in an easy tap in par i'm really wanting another birdie though and i'm going to play aggressive here just 374 yards i take the driver and again i pull this a little bit left not my best swing there I was hoping to be close to the green, but now I'm going to have to scramble from the rough. Just over 80 yards here, you can see I've got a pretty clean lie in the rough here. This isn't the most difficult of shots here. You don't know how that's going to come out. It comes out a little bit lower than I would have expected, but I'm on the green and I will have an outside chance at a birdie. Just on the first cut here, another lengthy birdie putt here. Doesn't break as much as I want, but managed to lag this up to a few feet and another tap in par. The 18th hole stretches 578 yards, and this is a big dog leg to the right here. Now, after so many near misses, I really want to get one final birdie to finish off this round. And we've started it off with a very good tee shot, and we're going to be in a position to attack the green in two shots. I have just under 250 yards left into the hole, and I'm going to be hitting a little hybrid here. You can see I'm aiming a little bit right. I'm going to try to draw this, make a really good strike on this, but it does not draw on me, and I actually get really lucky here. It misses just left of that tree, but I'm actually very close to that road and being out of bounds. But nonetheless, I'm in play, and I've actually got a chance to get up and down for my birdie. Considering how many times I've gotten up and down today, I'm actually feeling very confident on this. And again, notice my pre-shot routine. I'm just looking for that spot, envisioning that, and it comes out absolutely perfect. Rolls out a little bit further than I wanted, 
but I am gonna have a very makeable birdie putt to finish up today's round. You have to love the beautiful Canadian flag on the 18th hole. What a way to finish up. I decided to leave that pin in just because I'm filming this video. Hit a great putt here. You can see how much that breaks, but pour it in to finish up the round at a one under 70 with a birdie on the final hole. I enjoyed playing with my friend Scott. Also, I had a couple from Montreal join us there. And I really hope that all of you enjoyed today's tour of BAM Springs Golf Club. We had an amazing day on the links. As you can see, there are so many dramatic tee shots, approach shots, and just some beautiful scenery. BAM Springs Golf Club is one of the most iconic clubs in Canada. And if you're ever in the Alberta area, and certainly within Banff or Canmore or Calgary, make sure that you go and visit the BAM Springs Golf Club. It is definitely going to be one of the best Canadian golf experiences you can ever have. Everyone, my name is Cyrus. Thanks for spending time with me here on YouTube, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next vlog. Oh, good swing.